These are the lecture notes for um, chapter 34 on digestion, on the digestive system. Um, and what we didn't get to in class was the last section on nutrition and human health. And what I will try to do is cover this information and also cover the um, answers that need to go in your, um, in your uh, guided notes. So um, with nutrition, uh, there's basically, well, if you remember from Bio 111, we had four macromolecules, four um, molecules that are found in organisms, and they were carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. They're all, um, you know, components of food, but really the, the first three, the carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins, are the ones that are we talk about as being macronutrients. So um, for nutrition purposes, we don't really get a lot of nucleic acids in our diet, you know, that, that matter that much. You know, it's a small amount. But the other um, macromolecules, the carbs, the lipids, and the proteins, we are going to talk about those and how they're broken down and how they're used to make um, molecules that, that our body needs. So um, this first slide is not really covered in the notes, but I'm going to go over it. Carbohydrates are present in food in the form of sugars, and sugars can be um, monosaccharides and they can be disaccharides. Just to let you know, our table sugar down here at the bottom, table sugar, um, sucrose, is a disaccharide, and lactose or milk sugar is a disaccharide. But the monosaccharides are glucose, which we don't usually take in glucose in its straight form, um, in its basic form. Glucose is the sugar found in our blood. We call it blood sugar. Um, and glucose is the sugar that typically is used for cellular respiration in our cells. Fructose is a um, sugar that's found in fruit. And... Um, <clears throat> So anyway, it's very similar to glucose. Um, it is a monosaccharide, and we do take in glucose sometimes. Um, I mean, sorry, we do take in fructose sometimes when we eat fruit, um, but we rarely ever take in glucose, you know, in, in, its, in, in its basic form. We, we take in glucose and fructose usually, at, you know, as components of disaccharides. Um, and glucose we take in as a component of starch and a component of um, the fiber that we get in our diet. So um, then it says here, fruits, vegetables, milk, and honey are natural sources of sugars. All right, on the next page, after being absorbed from the digestive tract, all sugars are converted to glucose. And then that glucose is used in our, by our mitochondria to produce ATP, by cellular respiration. Now, um, it is important to know that the storage form of glucose in plants is starch. So plants store glucose molecules into long chains that form the polysaccharide starch. Animals store glucose as glycogen. So for your, um, I'm hoping this will work. For your um, <laughs> your guided notes, this number 54 should be plants store glucose as starch should go here and animals store glucose as glycogen. And then for 56, blank includes undigestible carbohydrates. Sorry about that. Undigestible carbohydrates derived from plants. This word should be fiber. All right. And I'll move that out of the way. So um, starch is digested to glucose in the digestive tract and excess glucose is stored as glycogen, typically in our liver. Our liver does that, okay? Our liver takes that excess glucose and stores it as glycogen. All right, so what is fiber exactly? Fiber includes various undigestible carbohydrates derived from plants. Uh, food sources that are rich in fiber include beans, peas, nuts, fruits, and vegetables. Technically, fiber is not a nutrient for humans because we can't digest it, but we still need it. We still need it to help us 
with our digestion. So there's two types of fiber. There's soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. Soluble fiber combines with bile acids and cholesterol in the small intestine and prevents them from being absorbed. Um, so it kind of slows down um, the absorption of cholesterol. And insoluble fiber adds bulk to fecal material and it stimulates movement in the large intestine, preventing constipation. So we need both um, types of fiber. Let's see here. And then the next section's on lipids. So let's move back to our um, notes. 56, blank includes undigestible, car undigestible carbohydrates derived from plants. That's fiber. 57, blank fiber combines with bile acids and cholesterol in the small intestine and prevents them from being absorbed. That's going to be um, soluble fiber. And sources of soluble fiber include beans, peas, nuts, um, fruits, and vegetables. Insoluble fiber adds bulk to fecal material. Sources of insoluble fiber include wheat bran, whole grains, and some vegetables. Now we're going to talk about lipids. Lipids are fats, oils, and cholesterol. Um, we, we hear about um, fatty acids referred to as saturated fatty acids, unsaturated fatty acids, and then of course we have trans fatty acids. But um, the natural sources of fatty acids are saturated and unsaturated. Saturated fatty acids tend to be solid at room temperature and usually come from animals. So think about things like butter, um, the fat that's found in meat, the meat that we eat. Um, whole milk and cheeses contain saturated fats. But unsaturated fats tend to be liquid at room temperature and are um, typically found in plant oils. So like olive oil, peanut oil, that kind of thing. Now, cholesterol is another lipid, and it can be synthesized by the body, and it's also found in animal foods. All right, so let's go and fill in the information on our guided notes. All right, 61. Oops, sorry. Let me go back up to it. 61, blank fatty acids usually come from animals. Examples are, are butter, meat, whole cheese, whole milk, and cheese. This will be saturated. And then unsaturated fatty acids are found in plant oils. And cholesterol, 63, can be synthesized by the body and is found in animal foods. All right, now the proteins. Adequate protein formation requires 20 different types of amino acids. And I don't know why this word is eight. This should be nine. Let me fix that. This should be nine essential. Uh, <laughs> this happens sometimes. Okay. Nine essential amino acids. There we go. Are required in the diet. Some foods, such as meat, milk, and eggs, provide all nine. So if you eat those types of things, I mean, if you, if you drink milk, if you eat eggs, or if you eat meat, any of those will provide you with all nine essential amino acids. And they, they're called, by the way, they're called essential because we can't make them. So we have to get them from our diet. So vegetables supply some essential amino acids, but they're usually deficient in at least one. So we call them incomplete. So um, where the problem comes in is with vegetarians and vegans. And vegetarians and vegans can still get all nine essential amino acids, but they have to eat a combination of grains and beans or legumes. So um, like one very, very common and very nutritious, healthy food for a vegan to eat or vegetarian to eat is rice and um, like a whole grain rice, such as brown rice or um, jasmine rice, basmati rice. Um, but 
whole grain rice and black beans or any kind of beans really, but black beans are particularly healthy, um, are a good combination. Um, rice and beans, that's one reason that they eat a lot of rice and beans is because that gives a vegetarian or a vegan all of their nine essential amino acids by eating that combination. So let's go back to our guided notes. It says foods that contain all nine essential acids and amino acids are meat, whole milk, and I'm sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting this from the last one. They are, let me go back, meat, milk, and eggs. Meat, milk, and eggs. I was about to say cheese, but and cheese is one too because cheese comes from milk. But anyway, um, let's come back to 64. All nine essential amino acids are meat, milk, and eggs. And then 65, how can vegetarians and vegans make sure to get all nine essential amino acids in their diet? They should have a combination of grains and beans or legumes or nuts. Those combinations will give them, um, give them their nine essential amino acids. All right, then we go to vitamins and minerals. Vitamins are defined as organic compounds. And that means that they're um, made of um, uh, chemicals that contain both carbon and hydrogen. So organic compounds the body is unable to produce, but they are required for metabolic purposes. So they have different purposes, but they are required in our diet. Um, minerals are going to be more like um, metals. So on the periodic table, they're defined as metals. The body needs about 20 elements for various physiological functions. Some individuals don't get enough iron, calcium, magnesium, or zinc in their diets. And then one that we get too much of, many of us get too much sodium. And all of these are different minerals that are needed by the body. But um, we don't get enough of some, and then we get too, definitely most people do get too much sodium. And that can contribute to high blood pressure or hypertension. Okay, so moving back to our notes. List uh, blank are organic compounds. This is number 66. Organic compounds the body is unable to produce, but that is required in the diet. And um, these are vitamins. And then it says list four minerals many people don't get enough of in their diets. And that's going to be iron, zinc, and um, iron, zinc, and calcium and magnesium. Iron, zinc, calcium, and magnesium. Calcium and magnesium are both required for, um, they're both needed uh, for um, the absorption of vitamin D. So um, that's, that's one reason they're important. List one mineral many people get too much of, that's sodium. And let's go on to 69 because you probably know this one. Obesity tends to correlate strongly with diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Obesity tends to correlate strongly with diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So let's go back to the notes. Type two diabetes and cardiovascular disease are often seen in people who are obese. This also tells you um, how to calculate your BMI, your body mass in index. Um, there's a section on type two diabetes. Um, type two diabetes is a form of diabetes mellitus and that is also diabetes mellitus is also um, has a form called type 1 but type 2 occurs when the hormone insulin is not functioning properly whereas type 1 is um, when you, your pancreas doesn't make insulin so type 2 diabetes occurs when insulin is not functioning properly it may occur due to insulin deficiency or insulin resistance so if it's insulin deficiency, then it's type 1. If it's insulin resistance, then it is type 2. Um, excess blood glucose, in either case, winds up in the urine. High blood glucose can cause tissue damage, like kidney damage, and even death, uh, because it can lead to um, ketoacidosis, which can um, 
which can cause death uh, if not treated. And then down at the bottom, type 1 diabetes can be managed by insulin injections.